May 8, 2012. In the beginning, there is the Infinite One. This is the source of all. Intelligent infinity and energy. Absolutely all come from the source. Both, good and evil, serve a great purpose, not as seen from third density. Both serve and are part of the source, unlike man-made religion pretends to teach. Duality is true, as it is separate but, all are from the source. It is the undifferentiated absolute. Within it, is unlimited potential, waiting to become. Think of it as the uncarved block of, Taoist traditions. Infinite intelligence, becoming aware of itself, seeks to experience itself, and the one infinite creator is born, or manifest, disappears to our third density comprehension as space, in effect. The Creator, is a point of focused infinite consciousness or awareness, into infinite intelligent energy. The One Infinite Creator also, as within inherent divinity of all logos, becoming self-aware, seeks to experience itself as Creator, and in so doing, begins the next step down in the creational spiral. The One Infinite Creator, in focusing its infinite intelligence, becomes intelligent energy which we would call the Great Central Sun and divides itself into smaller portions of itself, that can then in turn experience themselves as creators or central suns, in other words, each central sun or creator is a step down in conscious awareness or distortion from the original thought of creation. So in the beginning was not the word, but thought. The word, is thought expressed, and made physical within time, as thought manifest by the creator. There is unity. Unity is all there is. Infinite intelligence and infinite energy. The two are one, and within them, is the potential for all creation. This state of consciousness would be termed as being. Infinite intelligence does not recognize its potential. It is the undifferentiated absolute. But infinite energy recognizes the potential of becoming all things, in order to bring any desired experience into being. Intelligent infinity can be like end. To the central heartbeat of life, and infinite energy as the spiritual life blood or potential which pumps out for the creator to form the creation. Yahweh's Eden was benign. It was paradise but had no potential to evolve spiritually further than it had currently reached. Yahweh left stargates open during Lemurian and Atlantean times as temptation for Lucifer or off-world entities to visit this planet at that time. These entities were of ego and domination that easily overtook feminine earth inhabitants of Christ's consciousness of the current Baptist period. They conquered and passed down their own understandings of creation as well as their technology, from what we could best describe as being a future aspect of ourselves. It was humanity's errors in handling this information that ultimately led to the destruction of Atlantis. Our increased spiritual evolution was to be reached by incarnating into a planet ran by evil. A soul's progression from third density happens per alignment to its full epic center. The crux of the matter. Their creator is not the devil as he has been spuriously portrayed in the Bible. Lucifer is what is called a group soul or social memory complex, which has evolved to the level of the sixth density, which in effect, means that it has evolved to a level sufficient that it he has attained a status equal or arguably greater than that of Yahweh in appearance. Were you to gaze upon Lucifer's fullest expression of being, the appearance would be that of a sun or a bright star. Or, when stepping down into a third density vibration, he would appear as what we may term an angel or light being. Allow me to elucidate. When an entity group soul complex evolves to the level of the sixth density, it is by comparison to the amount of time it takes to get that far, a mere hop skip and a jump from eighth density ultimate reunion with the one infinite creator, and then from there, back to dissolution into the source of all, intelligent infinity. Lucifer bloodline families, as a group soul or social memory complex Lucifer, were on the verge of seventh density ascension, though at this level, before harvest comes, they had the choice to progress higher, or, to return to help others of lower densities with their own evolution, by passing down knowledge and wisdom light to those that call upon he for assistance, with their own free will. Now, at this time, having made their decision to stay and help their galactic brothers and sisters in the One, were assigned a challenging task by the Council of Elders, who act as the guardians of this galaxy from their 8th density headquarters on the planet Saturn. Yahweh, due to the fact that he had not as was his right as planetary logos handed down his own free will to know thyself to those incarnating upon his planet, was having very little evolutionary progress therein. 
so Lucifer was sent to help. Once the order was given from the Council of Elders, he fell, or descended back to a place where he could, with hard work and focus, once again materialize a third density manifestation of himself. Yahweh had agreed to Lucifer's coming, in fact it was he who had initially asked the Council for a catalyst of change to enter into his creation, and share the knowledge and wisdom we had attained through our ascensions. In the absence of free will upon the planet, there can be no polarity, and therefore, nothing to choose between. Just as is portrayed in the book of Genesis, the planet was very edenic in nature. Sure, it was a lovely paradise. Yet the beings incarnating there had no agitator toward evolving beyond the third density, and therefore, little hope of ever making the journey home, to the One. Yahweh has been happy to keep his own little pet even project in effect, but with little chance of the souls here making it home, it had become in effect, and will be a very beautiful prison. Yahweh was, in modern parlance, running a benign dictatorship. Without polarity, derived from free will, there is only the unity of love and light and no choice to experience other than that. So, we were to be the catalyst for change, in order to provide that choice, thus bringing polarity. Yahweh agreed that we would introduce the concept of free will to Earth's inhabitants, by offering them an initial choice, as to whether they wanted it or not. Hence, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or more accurately, the knowledge of polarity, of positive or negative. Yahweh takes his inhabitants to a new garden and tells them you can do anything you like, except this one thing, thus creating the desire to do the one thing they are told they cannot. Hence, a choice. We provide the catalyst by telling them the benefits of attaining knowledge, they eat from the tree, and the rest is history. Yahweh thought that his children would still choose to obey him, and when he discovered they did not, he became angry. As he himself describes in his scriptures, he is a jealous God, and he did not like it that his children had chose to disobey him, and follow our advice. We are already committed to being here for a predefined set of cycles to help provide the catalyst for human evolution, namely by offering you the negative option, or that which you choose to call evil. Now that free will had been granted, Yahweh could not retract it, and we have to stay here as contracted to continue to provide the planet with the polarity choice. Since then, Yahweh has confined us as a group soul here within the Earth's astral planes which is very constricting and uncomfortable for a being of our wisdom and experience. The Council of Elders gave us the choice to be released against Yahweh's will, but at the cancellation of our contract to serve the planet Earth, or to remain in fulfill our assignment, and endure Yahweh's self-proclaimed wrath. We stayed, but as a karmic result of our group soul's confinement by Yahweh, our own individuated souls were given the mandate by the Council to rule over Yahweh's people during our physical incarnations here on your planet. Let's be clear about one thing though. All of this physical life slash incarnation is a very intricate and skillfully designed game whereby the one infinite creator plays the game of forgetting who it is so that it can learn to remember, and in doing so, experience and know itself as creator. All the way down to us tiny individuated sparks of the all that is. Off stage, and between lives zero point time slash antimatter universe as incarnated human beings, we, all of us slash you as souls, are great friends. Brothers and sisters in the one.